We'll call the 19th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Stephan? Here. Van Akron? Excused. Vanderwill? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Weininger? Here. 15 present. Quorum's present. Uh, Alderman Van Akron's wife, Nita, had operation uh, for a heart, and I believe she had to have something done with her valve again. She's resting very comfortably, doing well, taking care of today. She was in surgery, I believe, about six hours, they said, so, but she's doing very well. We all send a card from the uh, council and some flowers down to her, so everybody knows. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I've been moved to dispense with the reading of the um, minutes of the previous Common Council meeting and the same stand is approved as entered on the record. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of the previous Council meeting under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Alderman Doyle. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> we have one hearing before us uh, this evening and has to amend the text of the zoning ordinance to delete the prohibitation of signs mounted on a roof. Any interested parties wishing to be heard? Steve? Mayor, Council, first of all, I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. Um, Planning Department wanted to take this opportunity to at least update the Council with regards to the status of the proposed roof sign amendment. Um, as you may be aware, a draft proposal was submitted to the Plan Commission a couple of weeks ago. Um, the ordinance was relatively short. Basically, it, it took out something that said, no sign shall be mounted on a roof. Just eliminated that section. The Plan Commission, as well as staff, had several concerns with that proposal. Um, basically, a couple of those concerns dealt with location. Where do we want to locate these signs? Do we want to locate them downtown? Do we want to locate them in the Harbor Center? Where do we want these signs located? Second, does, a number, uh, does not address the number of roof signs. Do we want to allow one, two, three, how many? Doesn't address size. Do we want, you know, how do we regulate size? And lastly, it didn't address the approval process. So before we drafted any type of formal language from the, the Plan Commission directed staff to contact several other communities, and staff uh, was in contact with Appleton, Fond du Lac, La Crosse, Oshkosh, and Manitowoc. Out of those five communities, only Manitowoc permitted roof signs, um, and those were with special regulations and things like that. The four other communities specifically prohibited uh, roof signs. So again, it appears that Sheboygan was rather um, progressive and forward thinking when they put, when we put uh, the prohibition of roof signs in our ordinance. So basically at this time staff just wanted to update you what the status is. It's the same information we're going to provide to the plan commission and we just wanted to let the uh, council be aware that our ordinance is consistent what other communities have with regards to prohibiting roof signs. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay. I just have to close. Yeah. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderman Kraft. Yeah, I move that the hearing be closed. Move to the second. The hearing be closed. Under discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. How we form? Yes, sir. Rosemary Vandenhut. Rosemary, you use the microphone there, and you'll have five minutes. Yes, ma'am. You can pull the microphone down a little bit so you can speak right into it. That's good. Thank you. Uh, our sewer backup problem goes back to August 1st. As you can see, I think you have the paperwork, Mayor? Yes. Uh, as you see from our damage injury uh, city forum, we've experienced three 
three sewer backups in 14 years. This is definitely the city of Sheboygan's fault. We're not going to accept act of God three times. God can't be that mad at me. We are indeed very irate taxpayers. Sewer backup number two, you promised it would be taken care of. North Avenue was dug up for three months, then dug up again. Presumably, we were getting our money's worth. Wrong. Either your sewer department and the construction company they hired didn't do it enough or they did it wrong. Either way, the, the buck will stop at your desk. I suggest you start by getting rid of incompetent people who are wasting our tax dollars. Sewer backup number three. As you can see, this time our damages cost $23,934.50. This is the city's fault. No lies, no excuses. We had to replace a fine coal or furnace, a water heater. Invoices are included. We had to throw away expensive sofas, sofa bed, family trips, pictures. Uh, we had to install a new sewer shutoff valve that cost $2,546.40 because the city sewer wasn't handling the rainfall from an average storm. These items may seem tri trivial to you at City Hall, but I assure you we're furious. Dr. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Attorney Humpke and his wife, Dr. Ross Worthington and his wife, those are our neighbors, Reverend Forbush, Joan Forbush, are, are equally upset as we are. That was my first uh, letter, my husband and I, uh, dated right after our sore backup. Uh, October 28th was our second letter. And you've given us platitudes to the act of God theory, but you've already denied our claim for the loss of 23,934 uh, and moved to a closed door meeting. You've moved our case further under the rug and told us we're, you're at the next level. Unfortunately, the same aldermen and attorney are deciding our case again. Do we expect them to suddenly see our side? I don't think so. It's three months since August 1st, first sewer backup, and you've again given us no explanation and what caused this mess and where the blame lies. While we've had to make phone calls for many concerned citizens, and we've made many phone calls to get to the bottom of this. I called Dick Schroeder and uh, Jacob uh, Bastian, construction company, who put in the new sewer pipes. I also talked to Ken DeBest, Best Systems, the subcontractor who installed the alarm system in pagers. I talked to Phyllis at Acuity uh, Insurance. I've talked to engineering and security people. The result of two weeks of phone calls, the day before August 1st sewer backup, the city sent inspectors to test the entire system. However, after the inspection, the city testers did not hit the reset button to reactivate backup generators and alarm pagers. After I called the city to notify the Public Works Department that our basements were flooding on August 1st, workmen came to the pump station at North 3rd Street. They pushed the reset button and all the systems and alarms came on in full force. Most of the people I talked to knew the problem and the solution by 7 a.m. on August 1st. Their conclusion, the city testers did not push the reset button to reactivate the alarm and pagers after the test. Now we've got no satisfaction as to our city's response, not from the mayor, my cults who suggested we sue the city. Great, we have that kind of money. Or any alderman I talked to, who is supposed to be re re representing us. This certainly smacks of a major cover-up considering there are an estimated 14 homes affected by this sewer backup. Our question is simple. Who were the city testers and why weren't the reset button on? The city is supposed to help its citizens with basic civic services and sewers is as basic as you can get. As a senior citizen on limited income, $23,934 is a lot of money for us over a mistake. We are only asking for what's fair, for the city to acknowledge the responsibility. No more lies, no more cover-ups, no more babble, just truthful answers. That's what we taxpayers deserve from our elected representatives. No phony stalls, no more weasel words, no more hiding behind closed doors. Just honesty and decency. It's not too much to ask of honest people. Rosemary, that's, that's my second letter. I'm, I'm finished. Okay. Okay, you're done.
Okay. So thank you. Thank you. For thank you, time. Rosemary. Stephen Cooper. <coughs> okay. That's it. Okay. Consent agenda. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that's items 19.1 through 19.8. I would move that all ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted, and that we pass the resolution. Move to second that all, all ROs be accepted and filed, <coughs> resolution be put upon their passage, and RCs be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, that's 9.1 through 9.8. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Berg? Aye. Monet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 9-9, <coughs> we'll hold for 1926. 9-10 lies over. 9-11 through 25 to be referred. Nineteen twenty-six, along with 19-9 by Alderman Warner designating the police department as the agency in the city to receive fund to receive found money or goods by city employees. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. On 19-9, I would make a motion to accept and file the report of officer. Second. And on 1926, I would make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion before us to pass the resolution on 1926 and file 199 under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, the resolution on document 1926 is a resolution designating the police department as the agency in the city to receive found money or goods for purposes of section 170.105 <coughs> of Wisconsin statutes. Essentially, this will bring us into compliance with state law and allow a proce process to deal with items found by city employees during the working hours, and the police department will be the people who oversee it, as they do with other lost and found items. Okay. Just another discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1927, a resolution by Alderman Perez, Montemayor, and Ryan Flesh directing the Special Audit Committee to hold open meetings in the Common Council Chambers at a time no earlier than 6 p.m. <coughs> televised live cable 8. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I take it that the resolution can be put upon its passage yes. tonight? And I would make a motion to, to put the resolution uh, 1927 upon its, upon its passage. Your Honor, this is a resolution that was drafted um, in response to a lot of people that have called me and some that have stopped me at the mall and uh, Piggly Wiggly and Walmart and so forth, asking that the council consider um, televising the, the meetings of the special audit committee that was put together. Uh, they wanted to have the opportunity and would ask that other people have the opportunity to either be present during the meetings in city council chamber or to be able to view it via channel 8. The reason that the city council chambers is being designated as the place to hold the meetings is because the television cameras are already set up here. There wouldn't be any additional movement, cost, or anything like that. The time that they are requesting uh, that the meetings be held at 6 p.m. or thereafter, and there again, uh, some were concerned that maybe the meetings were going to be held at 3 o'clock p.m., 1 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. And a lot of these people worked, and they were hoping that uh, the council would be considerate enough to hold these, to have the special audit committee hold the meetings after 6 o'clock, which uh, in their mind and in my mind is a reasonable time for citizens who work up until 5 o'clock. And then they also asked that these uh, meetings be uh, televised at least twice, uh, the recording be televised at least twice afterwards uh, so that other people would have the opportunity to see them, at least the people who didn't show up during the meetings here or the people who weren't able to see them during that particular time. So this is pretty much where this resolution originated from, is from um, direct requests from several residents in, uh, in, in my district and other districts. Okay. Alderman Manny. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Would the members of the Ethics Committee, uh, Special Committee, uh, and doing the study uh, be open to that time frame? Have you contacted them? 
No, I have not contacted them. I, uh, quite frankly, didn't think of it. I thought this would be, uh, since it's a committee that was put together by this council, the council could authorize and direct a special committee to hold the meetings here in city council chambers. And this is a great way uh, to just give public access to what we do. Alderman Wangman. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just, just a few thoughts. Assuming that the cable company pays their employees and this is extra work, who's going to pay for this? Where's that money coming from? Uh, secondly, I think I don't care what time of the day you pick, you're going to find somebody that's working. Because at 6 o'clock, all the people that are working nights are working. So I don't, you know, you, you could have it at 4 in the morning or 3 in the afternoon or whatever, and somebody's going to be working and won't be able to uh, come to it. And I know of no other committee that operates within the city government where the chairman of that committee does not pick the place and time. And the main reason that we picked a committee of citizens was so that there would be no hint of any kind of council interference. I think it would uh, be a disservice to the chairman of the committee not to allow him to pick the date, the place, and the time of the meeting. And no matter when you do this, somebody's gonna squawk and say, hey, I'm working. Thank you. Alderman Montmayer. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I understand it probably would cost some money, but Mayor, when you decided to call for this committee, did you have, you must have had some money in mind other than just the, um, for this extension, this audit extension, other than just the review of the uh, Quarles and Brady. We had uh, money, we, did, we didn't allot money for any televised programs. If was any money considered for the special audit committee that you wanted? That's all volunteer. That oh, right, getting, I understand that. They're not getting anything for it. So there, there wasn't any. Right. Um, has has um, Attorney T. Winkle mentioned when he would be starting? That you're going to have to talk to Alderman Warner. He, Alderman Warner? I can answer that, Your Honor. I know they're trying to get a, a meeting together for this week. With the holidays and everything, you have five people, and you had Christmas and New Year's between our last meeting. It's pretty difficult to get five people together at that time. I One of them was a minister. Uh, it's a little me. difficult to get those people together at that time. So they're going to plan a meeting for this week. I don't know if they've contacted Pat's yeah. office, but I did call this morning to see where they were with setting one up, and he said they're trying to get people together for a meeting this week, and that'll be publicly noticed, and all their meetings will be open to the public. And I the, and received a phone call from Attorney T. Winkle this afternoon. <coughs> He's scheduling a meeting for Thursday. He had three, three people that said they could make it. He was waiting for answers for the other two. He wanted to use the planning conference room for the meeting. I told him he'd have to contact that department to get the approval. Um, and then we talked about when he has to get the agenda to me so I can get it to all the other persons. Uh, I'm sorry, what conference room did he ask for? City planning. City, city planning. Mm -hmm. Okay, I still think it would be a very good idea to approach <laughs> Attorney T. Winkle with these, with these concerns, with this plan. I think he would be very much in favor of the community being able to see what was going on without having to actually be here. It would open the information to more of the community. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Press. Thank you, Your Honor. Just in response to Alderman Wagaman's comments, uh, I think that by televising the pre-recorded version twice <laughs> afterwards would meet the needs of the people who do work after 6 o'clock and so forth. Uh, as far as cost, uh, this is a special committee. This is unlike any committee that has been created. Some people didn't ask for this committee to be created. It was created nonetheless. I don't think that the cost is going to be huge, but whatever the cost is, it's very little compared to give the public access to what we do. And in this particular instance, the importance of this committee, um, we could sit here and say it's going to cost a lot of money. Well, if this committee comes back and orders a special audit, I guarantee you it's going to cost a lot of money too. And I take it everybody would be in agreement with that. I don't know, and I don't think that holding these meetings here, given that the scenario the setup is already here, plenty of seats are here, that it's going to cost this council or this city an enormous amount of money. I would question that very seriously. Alderman Vanderwell. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman, Alderman Wangman that uh, I think money would, would be an issue. And I would like to ask Mike Hotz about that, if you could explain the TVH side of that. 
if you can. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, one thing that hasn't been brought up, uh, first of all, TV8 employees are City of Sheboygan employees. We uh, fund that through a portion of the franchise fees from, from Charter Communications. Uh, we have programming scheduled every night on a regular basis just to go through. Uh, Thursday night was the night I heard uh, for, the, for the proposed meeting. That is uh, Hispanic and Humane Society programming that entire evening. These are people who get together on a weekly basis and do their programming. We would have to preempt their programming, which doesn't set too well with, uh, with the people we work with. We have special programming scheduled Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday each evening. Uh, Monday nights uh, are either legislative updates on the off council meetings, and then on the alternate Mondays are council meetings. So what we'd have to do is uh, preempt some programming, which doesn't set too well with the people who volunteer their time to, to come in and, and do that type of programming. Uh, another problem it creates, uh, I've got two full-time employees at TV8. They're non-represented employees who do not get overtime. They work, uh, you'll see them at South High Games, uh, North and South Games on Friday, Saturday evenings, UW Sheboygan Games, uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Games. Uh, uh, they do not work, I guess, an ordinary nine to five shift. What happens when they're working these late hours, uh, I'm unable to staff the UW or the uh, TV8 uh, studio out at UW. The more time they work evenings, equates to less time out there uh, doing our regular programming. Uh, so it does create, it does create some, some problems we haven't, we haven't run into. I had asked uh, Alderman Werner in the past when he schedules uh, uh, Committee of the Whole meetings, if he could perhaps have those on the same evening as, as council to help me out uh, with our scheduling our TV8 people. So we've done that on, on Mondays, and if, I, if, if we uh, go off that schedule for additional, for additional nights, it does create a problem. So I hope that does answer, answer your question. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Alderman Reinflesch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm happy that this has created some debate in looking at the best way of getting information out to the public. Um, I did under, understand that there would be some conflicts of schedule and there may be some costs involved before putting my name on here. Uh, however, I think we have a cr uh, crisis of confidence in city government right now. Um, the committee has been called by request from people within the community. Um, we're doing this investigation by request from people within the community. Uh, I, we're not doing the ethics board, we're doing a subcommittee of the ethics board. Um, that we voted on here, I think it's important that people see the transparency of this investigation. As it goes through, the questions asked, the responses given, people can be confident then that the investigation was done properly and whatever solution comes out of that is the proper solution that way. So I do know that there's gonna be pro problems here, but I think the best way for the community to see what we're doing is legitimate, is proper, and they can have confidence in the end result is by having it here uh, and broadcast on TV. Thank you. Okay. And last, Alderman. Where did you push the button? the lights on, Your Honor. <coughs> yeah, it's on. I, I didn't know if you wanted to speak or not. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, I guess I won't support this document. And part of the reason for that is, is that the Special Audit Committee was approved by this council to do a specific job and report back to us, this council, with its findings. This is not an unusual process by any means when it comes to a special committee. It was made clear when the Special Audit Committee was approved that its meetings would be open to the public and to the media, as well as being properly noticed according to state law. We do not force time constraints on or televise our standing committees or any of our special committees or commissions. The Finance Committee, Public Works, Public Protection and Safety, Salary and Grievance, Special Marina, Building Use, Plan Commission, Redevelopment Authority, Housing Rehab Loan Committee, None of these are put into such of a box, into such a box. 
and a special audit committee should not be put into a box either. The special audit committee will meet on the call of the chair. The chairman will poll its members to determine when they can be available and then set the meeting date and time. That's not uncommon. Special committees operate that way all the time. It will be properly noticed and open to everyone. This is a normal and standard practice. I would like to remind everyone that the special audit committee is made up of volunteers, unpaid and willing to give of their own time to bring forth facts and conclusions regarding the issues at hand. It is not fair nor is it proper to try and put constraints and roadblocks in the path of the special audit committee to limit their progress and independence from this political body. And I believe that is what this resolution would do. The Special Audit Committee will comply with Wisconsin's open meeting and records laws. And when their work is done, they will report back to the council. Their report on the ethics issues in question will go to the ethics board and will be televised. We talked about that when we approved this committee. And with all the older persons present and open to the public. The report on the Blue Harbor contract will go to the Common Council and possibly to the Committee of the Whole, be televised and open to the public with all of the older persons present. The right thing to do is to let the Special Audit Committee do its work as directed by this Common Council in accordance with Wisconsin state law and report back to us. The reports and the Common Council's deliberations on them will be properly noticed, televised on TV8, and open to the public. I will not support this roadblock to the progress of the Special Audit Committee and urge the Council to vote to deny this resolution so the Committee can move forward with its findings of fact. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. You. Uh, thank you, Alderman Warner, for your thoughts. I don't agree with many of them, but that's all right. We still speak very nicely to each other at the end of the meeting. I don't think this is a roadblock. I think this makes it smoother, easier, and this is a special committee. It isn't the routine ones. And wouldn't it be wonderful if all of our committee meetings could be broadcast, which we can't. Difficult to air because it interferes with present programming? Yes, but definitely not so difficult we can't overcome it. The money for the employees? Yes, but a special committee special audit committee that you called for needs a little bit of money. I think we should do this to make it easier, smoother, not with roadblocks. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Wangerman. Just one comment yet. It almost appears to me that people are insinuating that the only distribution of news we have in this city is cable TV. I mean, we have some other gentlemen here at the table who are reasonably capable at broadcasting the news. And I'm sure Mr. Petrie is going to be writing some articles, and I'm sure that the radios will have anything in it that people want to know. So I think if people really want to find out what's going on in that committee, all they have to do is pick up the paper or listen to the radio. All in the press. Thank you, Your Honor. i got to respond to that one. No, I didn't. I spoke once and I answered questions. You did, but go ahead. I'll give you the floor, finish up, and. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I just wanted to make a clarification here that although the radio does an excellent job of reporting what happens in the council, there's an enormous amount of information that's left out because they're limited to, to time, airtime. The same goes for the, for the newspaper. Uh, Mr. Petrie is limited to a certain amount of words per article. There's an enormous amount of information that does not get reported simply because he's limited to information. So to stand here and say that we have two competent entities that can report everything that happens in every meeting is not true. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't know if there's a hang up on the, the word special or not, but um, we have the Special Committee on Capital Improvements. We have the Special uh, Marina Committee. We have several other special committees that, that we call and have them meet on the call of the chair. And that's what this Special Audit Committee should do. We, on those other commissions and committees that I mentioned, we meet usually at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, 5.30, one I, I think meets, um, and uh, as late as we can so that we get enough public participation. I can't remember 
the last time that we had public participation in any of these meetings other than department heads coming in and, and requesting something. Uh, because of that and because you get a report of committee, you get minutes from that, all the aldermen will receive those minutes. Um, they're open to the public if they so wish because I believe they'll be posted on our website. Um, and although not everybody has a computer, um, they do have access to it. They, they, the paper has access to, the, to those as, as well. Um, I can't see supporting this and, and tying the hands of, of anybody on this special committee. Thank you. <clears throat> Alderman Stefan. Uh, yes. Um, it, I think the important thing is, is what Alderman Werner said is that this is going to be televised. It's going to be public. Everything they bring us, you know, last month, everything they brought us was garbage because we didn't trust any of these people. They're from out of town. They were all, you know, some of them like the mayor, some of them hate the mayor. Who are we kidding? We're going to go through this on the council floor. Every one of us knows it. That's going to be televised. I guess as a, as a, a side and maybe a suggestion to Alderman Werner, it occurred to me when I was put on the county board, and I, I don't know if they do this all the time or it's just because 10 of us got elected that same year, but former corporation counsel Alex Hopp gave us a presentation before we ever took our oath on ethics. And I think as we go forward in this, before we meet as an ethics committee to look at this other ethics committee, I think we should have clearly, you know, Attorney McLean probably wouldn't want to do it, but maybe somebody else who can go through and tell us what ethics is. Because I think there's a lot of gray area in ethics. Even if you understand it 100%, there's gray area. For example, I've heard of an older person who told me, well, this other older person threatened me and said he'd go find somebody to run against me if I didn't vote a certain way. I would find it unethical. Clearly, some people don't. Similarly, another alderman related to me that he thought an alderman th said a physical threat to him on the floor of the council. Again, clearly, I would find that unethical. Some people don't. And I guess my point is I think if, there's always going to be gray areas when it involves ethics, but I'd like to see us have an instruction from you know, a lawyer, corporation counsel, hop, somebody who's dealt with these types of issues so we all know exactly what ethics is. I have people, too, who stop and see me in the community and they say, yeah, there was a mistake made, but is that ethics? And I said, well, we'll see what happens, I guess, with the investigation. You know, it's not being handled the way I wanted it handled, the mayor wanted it. He said, yep, we'll double bag it, we'll go an extra mile to make sure we have this committee and then the other committee to make sure I'm 100% clean. I understand that. You know, I mean, I applaud you for that. It's not the way I would have done it. But I think what we've got to remember here is the document we're dealing with had two signatures on it. Now, is everybody who wants to this, have this televised, are you telling me that if I get two signatures that accuse any of you of bad ethics, we're going to have a televised meeting on it? We're going to accuse you of bad ethics? Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. I'm not prejudging anybody. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. But I think we're setting an awful dangerous precedent. If we decide two people can write a letter to the community and all of a sudden we're going to have televised meetings, we're going to have change our hours, change our committees, and it's a whim of two people. And all we have is accusations. I think you're setting a very, very dangerous precedent. And that's, you know, I certainly wouldn't support this because, like I said, I, I believe in open government. I always have. It's going to come back. It's going to be open. We're going to deal with it. We're going to deal with the committee. They find something we don't like, if they, we don't think they did it right, we're going to certainly look at it. I'm sure that'll happen. But I think you're setting a very dangerous precedent to approve something like this. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Reinflash, back to you. Uh, thank you. I think we need to focus on why we're making this recommendation. It's not for the alderman's information. We have access to that. We have the minutes. We're going to meet back with the, uh, at the, as the ethics board to, with this committee to get their findings. Uh, my concern isn't us getting information. The concern is the public seeing with their own eyes. Um, I can't believe that my phone is the only one ringing off the hook talking about how people feel about local government nowadays. And I can't argue with them because of their perception. I can give them the facts of, of my reality, but their perception is they have a crisis of confidence in our local city government. I just want to be able to make it easier for people to watch the proceedings on their own so that whatever result comes out, they can be confident in, and we can move forward, and they can be confident in the government again as well. And that's all I'm making the recommendation for, um, is that people be able to see it on their own, own see, believe with their own two eyes, and be confident again in, in the city government. Thank you. Alderman Groff. Just, just one more statement after uh, Alderman Reinfeldt made that um, plea. Uh, you know, if there are that many citizens that are that concerned, 
They can come to the meeting once they know when it is, and it will be moved if they don't have enough room in the, in the place where um, they want it. Uh, there will be enough space that will be available for them to meet anytime they want to meet, and they can ask any questions they want at the meeting as the chairman has said. So I think we're doing as much as we can to give um, as much information as we need to. Thank you. Pat? Oh, wait a minute. Alderman Warner. Oh, briefly, Your Honor. I guess uh, in my district, I have not heard from a great deal of people who are gravely concerned with what the Special Audit Committee is, is doing at this time. In fact, not one single phone call. However, I have talked to many people around the city when I go to the grocery store and other places, and they have told me quite a different story about what their concerns are. And I won't bring those up right now. But one thing for sure, this is a special audit committee to bring something back to the Common Council and the Ethics Board of this council, which will be open to the public, televised, televised with their presentation to the Ethics Board, and with the presentation to the Common Council and or Committee of the Whole for the Blue Harbor contract issues. And there's, it's, this is just senseless to have a resolution like this come through. And I think there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. However, I think we should vote, the, vote this <coughs> resolution down and leave it at that. OK. Pat, would you call the roll, please? And I would be for passage. Right. Bonnet? No. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Manny? No. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? No. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? No. Vanderweel? No. Wongerman? No. Warner? No. Wenninger? No. Bauman? No. Berg? No. Four ayes, 11 noes. Motion fails. Okay, 1928. We'll lie over. 29 through 34 to be referred. 1935, by Public Protection and Safety, recommending denying beverage operators license 6235 based on a non-cooperative cooperation with a non-cooperation with the committee and misrepresenting her record on her application. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and adopt the report of committee. Move to second that we accept and adopt the report of committee. Under discussion. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, is uh, Ms. Hernickel here to represent herself? No, Your Honor, we can proceed. Okay, we have a motion before us under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please, Pat? Doyle? Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. I'm sorry. Too much coughing going on. <laughs> Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wongerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. 15 eyes. Motion carried. 1936 through 38, lies over. 1939, to be referred. 1833, a resolution by Alderman Groff, Stephan Doyle, transferring funds to establish estimated revenue and appropriations for the police training aides. Alderman Groff. Your Honor, um, that resolution, as well as Resolution 1832, which is a resolution to establish the appropriation to advance funds from the general fund to TID uh, 10, debt service fund to be repaid with interest, and um, establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development lead-based paint abatement program. And then Resolution 1834, which um, increases appropriations by 98833 for the fire department, regular salaries, and $85,646 for the police regular salaries. And... 1835, with a which is also a resolution amending appropriations in the Department of Public Works budget, as outlined. I would move that all um, four of those resolutions be put upon their passage. Move to second the resolutions be put upon their passage, 1833, 32, 34, and 35, under discussion. 
Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, may I ask Alder Alderman Graf a question? Sure. Um, 1834, we're authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget for fire and police departments. Increasing appropriations for fire services, regular salaries, and for police regular salaries. It's just regular salaries. There's no wage increases in there. Correct. Okay. So the word increasing means increasing appropriations, $98,833. The first right. word in that. Right. And you're increasing that from those various accounts that show like under the column that says from under the general fund, fire service unemployment compensation, fire protection or prevention bureau unemployment compensation. You're moving those funds that are left over to um, the general fund fire services regular salaries. Thank you, Alderman. Okay. There's another discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 15 ayes. The motion carried 1839, General Ordinance by Alderman Warner, rescinding ordinance granting an encroachment to Marcel and Shannon Brio for the purpose of seasonal outdoor seating. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I'd make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Right. Move to second ordinance be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, your honor, this is an ordinance rescinding general ordinance number 950102, which granted an encroachment to Marcel and Shannon Kring Biro for the purpose of seasonal outdoor seating. Uh, your honor, the Biro was granted an encroachment for seasonal outdoor seating in <coughs> April of 2002. And for whatever reason, they, they did not pay the fee for that. And at this time, they, they have not used that uh, right to encroachment. And under city code, the rights of encroachment are automatically removed within 10 days of notice to them. And if the biro would uh, desire to do this in the future, all they need to do is reapply for an encroachment. Just another discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Stefan, Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Winninger, <coughs> Bauman, Berg, Bonet, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Graf. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1842, General Orange by Alderman Van Akron, Wangaman, Manny, changing the class grade of laboratory technician and wastewater treatment plant operator one in the WWTPTO. <coughs> Alderman Wangaman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, reference uh, document 58-0304. Uh, I make a motion that the ordinance be put upon this passage. Move to second the general ordinance be put upon this passage under discussion. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm, I'm wondering if uh, Alderman Wagman or someone can tell us um, if there's any cost associated with this and then also if this is part of the reorganization that many of the departments are looking at. Alderman Wangaman, you want Tom to answer that? Tom Holm? Yeah. Okay. Oh, actually, there's a savings that right now the uh, lab tech works seven days a week, so he's getting two and three quarter hours overtime on Sundays. He will not have to come in on Sundays to do those tests. Okay. And is it part of, I know you're looking at a reorganization of some, is this the start of it or is this the? No, it's not. Oh, it's this okay. is something different. All right, thank you. Okay, another discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1840, general ordinance by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Vanderweel, to add a stop sign on Pennsylvania Avenue westbound at Broughton Drive. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor and make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. <coughs> Move to second ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, your honor, this is an ordinance relating to stop signs so as to add a stop sign on Pennsylvania Avenue westbound at, Broughton, at its intersection with Broughton Drive. Uh, this is the intersection at the, sh the short stretch of street 
uh, that runs past the Coast Guard Station and the Yacht Club, and it dead ends right by the waterfront there. Uh, there's currently a yield sign, and with increased traffic along our beautiful lakeshore, this will help to improve safety at that intersection. The Public Protection Safety Committee recommends passing. There's another discussion. Pat, would you call the roll? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1940, NRO by Sheboygan Transit Commission recommending filing various documents that can be accepted and placed on file. Moved and second to accept and place on file under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 41 will go to public protection and safety, and 42 will go to public protection and safety. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we convene in closed session, closed session under the exemption provided in 19.851G of the Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. We have a motion before us to go into closed session. Under discussion. Okay. Uh, Pat, call the roll. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. We'll recess for five minutes. Be back in five minutes and we'll be in closed session.